Well, don't forget this is a non-profit event. Everyone here is volunteering, speakers, organizers, volunteers. So if you have the chance to give your feedback and or to say thank you to organizers and volunteers, do it at every time. A hug, say thank you, whatever you want. This is important for every one of us. Well, related to SEO, but in a different way from the very technical aspect, we are going uh, uh, to have the next, um, the next talk. We'll have Adam Silverstein from Colorado. He's a uh, WP core committer for more than 10 years. In the past, he worked for uh, Tank Up building uh, enterprise sites. And now he's working on Google on the web platform team. He loves rafting and grow vegetables. And a top, um, specific thing about his talk, you are going to see a lot of links and resources. So wait until the last slide, because he's going to share a link with all the information you need in order to follow the presentation. With all of you, Adam Silverstein. Thank you. Big applause, please. Come on in, people. Feel free to come through if you need to come in yes. to the side. It's very crowded. All right. Yes, I'm people from that side, please. Super happy today to be here to talk about INP, a uh, new inter uh, metric for interactivity. So INP is the new interactivity metric for the core web vitals, which aim to measure user experience on the web with loading, stability, and responsiveness. INP measures how responsive a page is to user input. It measures all the interactions on a page load, on a page lifecycle, and reports on the slowest or the worst response. And INP helps you identify these slow interactions that might not be apparent when you're building or testing your site. INP looks at every interaction on the page, excluding some outliers. And a good INP score means that your worst interaction is 200 milliseconds or less. Any response over 500 milliseconds is considered poor, and everything in between is deemed needs improvement. And since users have a variety of experiences, what we're aiming for is having 75% of users having this good experience. And IMP problems are mainly on mobile devices, so that's where we're going to focus our energy, our research, and our work. Good responsiveness means a web page reacts promptly to user actions making the site feel snappy. And many studies have shown that improving user experience uh, leads to directly to better business results. And a recent study showed that users with good uh, INP scores are 25% more likely to convert. And a key insight into this need for this new metric is that users spend 90% of their time on web pages after they load. So we already have this uh, FID metric that we're replacing with INP. And you can see here uh, that this chart that WordPress sites do very well on FID. Um, in fact, almost all sites on the web pass the FID metric, the first input delay metric. So that's good, right? No, it's not great, because we all know that we have bad experiences on the web. We've all had the experience of trying to click on something, and it doesn't respond, and then we click again, and then suddenly two things happen. Arg, it's very frustrating. These are bad experiences, and this is what INP is going to help us capture and isolate and find and then fix. And as you can see here, uh, WordPress sites are struggling a little bit more with INP, and INP is going to help identify exactly where users are having these poor interactions. So think of this as a new tool and an opportunity to improve your website for your users. So let's dig in a little bit more to see what INP measures. An interaction happens anytime a user interacts with your page with a click or a touch. And uh, you know, let's say you're booking a hotel room, and you click on a calendar pop-up, and it's going to pop up a calendar. You click on a button, it's going to pop up a calendar and show you the available dates. So in this case, the, in, the interaction could be several events, a pointer down and pointer up, and the interaction ends when the user is shown some update, when in this case the calendar pops up for the user. FID measures this part of the interaction, the time it takes for the event handlers to run after the input event. This could be slow if the page is already busy 
with other work, some heavy JavaScript running in the background. And there's some problems, though, with this metric. It only measures the first interaction. And second, secondly, it, um, it only uh, measures the time that it takes for the event handlers to file, not the entire interaction. And also, remember, users spend 90% of their time on pages after they load. That's why we have INP. INP measures uh, the entire interaction. And this could be slowed down by problems at any point between the input being received and the update being displayed. And unlike FID, which only measures the first interaction, INP measures all the interactions on the page lifecycle, excluding some outliers, and reports on the worst. And some quick tips here for developers. If you're uh, writing event handlers, make sure that you show some progress indication to the user as quickly as possible. And yield back to the main thread so that that uh, display can happen quickly. And if you're doing more work, you might need to split up that work as well so that you don't interfere with subsequent interactions that the user has. So let's break down what, these, uh, what an interaction is. First, we have this input delay. This is the time that it takes before the input handlers fire. And this can be slowed down when there's other stuff happening in the background. Could not be related to your JavaScript, but other JavaScript running on your page. Second is the processing time. This is the amount of time that it takes for all of the event handlers to run on the event before it gets to displaying the update. And this could be slow uh, if your JavaScript is poorly written, and it's easily fixed by introducing uh, yielding back to the main thread inside your JavaScript. And third is the processing delay. This is the time that it takes for the browser to actually display the update. And this could be slow if you have a very overly complex DOM or CSS, and you're on a low-powered device, for example. So INP is a field measurement. So it comes from real users in the field, or so-called real user metrics. And that's the data that you need to get to be able to figure out if you have INP problems. And you may already have this data if you search PageSpeed Insights or in your Search Console report. But even better is collecting your own real user metrics. And you can do that using an open source tool like Faro or one of these RUM providers that I've listed here. Or you can roll your own solution with the Web Vitals JavaScript library and sending off your own data, build your own dashboard, and then you have full control. And this will help you identify where the poor interactions are on your page. Once you know where those poor interactions are, you can get into fixing them. So what you're going to do then is you're going to go back into your local environment. You're going to use Chrome DevTools or another DevTools, throttle everything, the network and the CPU, and try to reproduce the interaction. And use the Chrome Web Vitals extension to log out INP as you're interacting with the page. And then you can try quickly fixing this. Uh, for example, using the network panel to block JavaScript and seeing which JavaScript is related to causing the problem. Uh, you can look at long tasks uh, in, the, in the debug console to figure out exactly which JavaScript is causing the issues. Or you can go into overrides and simplify CSS and JavaScript. And again, try to fix that problem interactively on your, on your lab device. Or if you control the code base, then you might need to make changes in your code. Or maybe it means eliminating some JavaScript that you're loading and getting rid of a feature that isn't that important anymore. This is a good time for some spring cleaning. And um, any time you get these fixes and deploy them, then you're going to need to see how does that affect actually things in the field? And, and what, are, what is the next worst problem that I need to fix now? And that's it. That's my talk. I've got a QR code here with a survey. If you want to take a quick survey, if you learned something, feedback for me. And also, the link is for the slides. And all of the links that were in the bottom of the slides will be available there in the deck. This is a gift for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, applause for Adam, the very Google talking about its own measure. So, incredible. So,